Welcome. Let's go ahead and look at a related rates problem involving a pebble that's been dropped in a pond. The pebble was dropped into a pond which causes ripples in the form of concentric circles to form. The radius of the outer ripple is increasing at a constant rate of 6 inches per second. When the radius is 4 feet, at what rate is the total area of the disturbed water changing? So in this example, we are relating the radius rate of change to the rate of change of the total area. And because we're relating those two rates of change, uh, we need a, an equation or perhaps a formula that relates the radius of a circle to the area of the circle. So uh, we know that the area of a circle is equal to pi r squared. And we can imagine if a pebble is dropped in a pond that these circles are moving outward. And in this case, the circles are moving outward means that the not only is the radius of the circles changing as the radius moves outward, but also the area contained in those concentric circles is changing as well. So when we look at our equation, area equals pi times r squared, we need to realize that the area of this disturbed water is changing because the radius of the circles are changing. So let's go ahead and uh, take the derivative with respect to t on both sides of our equation. So we get d, d, d dt of area equals d dt of pi r squared. And so what that's going to give me is on the left hand side simply a dA dt. So the rate at which area is changing equals, now pi is a constant, so pi um, times the derivative of r squared. And the derivative of r squared is going to be 2r dr dt because we know that that radius of those circles is changing over time. So here we have a, an equation that relates the rates of change for area on the left and radius on the right. So now, uh, what we've been asked to do is to find the rate of change for the total area. And so we can notice that um, this equation as it currently stands has the rate of change of area equal to this product that we see on the right hand side. So what do we know? Well, we know from this sentence, the radius of the outer ripple is increasing at a constant rate of six inches per second. That sentence tells us that the rate of change of the radius, or dr dt, is six inches per second. And then, what else do we know? we're told we're interested in what happens when the radius is four feet. So this tells us we're interested in the radi what happens when the radius is four feet. Now something to notice is that our units of measure for the radius are different in the two, in the two um, phrases. In our dr dt, the radius is measured in inches, and 
when the radius is four feet, that's measured in feet. So let's go ahead and convert uh, the four feet to inches. So that's going to be 40, 48 inches. And it's going to be easier to work with 48 inches than um, 0 0.5 feet for our radius rate of change. Okay, so what do we end up with? We end up with dA dt equals pi times 2 times my radius, which is 48 inches, times my rate of change for my radius, which is 6 inches per second. And when I multiply those all together, the ADT is equal to 576 times pi. And notice my units here. I've got inches times inches, so those are square inches, and then I've got that over seconds. So I've got inches squared per second. Now hopefully those units make some sense to us because notice that um, our rate of change is area per time and area is measured in square units, in this case square inches per unit of time and our per unit of time here is seconds. So all that's left is for us to interpret what this means. So as we interpret what we've done here, we find that the total area of the disturbed water is changing at a rate of 576 pi square inches per second, or approximately 1810 square inches per second, when the radius of the outer ripple is four feet, or 48 inches, and increasing at a rate of six inches per second. So we're really not done with this uh, question, answering this question until we have interpreted what we found in the context of what we were given. I hope this is helpful.